when I when I brought you on the ship, I thought you were cute. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey, Mike. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. Uh, we're talking about Dark Star. Yes, we are. Yeah. Uh, so uh, before we uh, get into it too far, uh, I wanted to mention our most recent. Sorry, one second. <laughs> the feedback is killing me. Can't <laughs> apologize. Anyway, so uh, what I was talking about was uh, I apologize. I gotta turn the volume way, 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 way down. Uh, hopefully, I can still hear you, Thomas. Apologize, but uh, yeah. I had uh, <laughs> feedback in my mic, and it's very. Uh, annoying. No worries. Uh, in, in any case, uh, technical difficulties aside, I, I swear to God, I'll get this this audio thing done at some <laughs> point. But um, uh, in any case, uh, what I'm talking about uh, is uh, uh, our main show here. We're the first, last nerdum. Um, Tom is my co-host. I am Mike uh, or ML, whatever you want to uh, say. Uh, but I wanted to say uh, I was talking about our last main show uh, th this past week is uh, the horror of. Uh, uh, my house, <laughs> uh, told through the through the uh, genre of video game um, and many different levels. That we just we uh, kind of go in and highly recommend that. Uh, of course, after you watch uh, us, uh, go go check out that uh, the main uh, video by Power Pack. Uh, shout out to him. Uh, well, um, in any case, um, what uh, this is kind of our uh, um, uh, another one that we wanted to cover. Uh, so we'll we'll have it uh, handy uh, when we go through it, um, but uh, that that is uh, this week's uh, one uh, is Dark Star uh, and uh, uh, what what, do you, what were your thoughts uh, when, when we pulled when I uh, I requested this one, uh, Tom? Yeah, um, it's one of those that uh, John Carpenter had done uh, that I hadn't seen yet, um, so I was uh, <laughs> I. I was kind of excited to see it. Um, I knew um, it, 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 it. the The thought of it was that uh, it wasn't all that great, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it was uh, one of those movies that I, I I meant to watch, but I'd never had gotten around to seeing. Uh, so I I uh, was <laughs> kind of excited. About actually watching it, uh, so when um, and it, it's not <laughs> like a really long movie to watch. No. It's only like an hour and twenty three minutes. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's uh, you know it's one of those sci fi movies that uh, you know there there's so much history to it um, that 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 history almost over overwhelms it. Uh, but it still kind of uh, maintains itself uh, through through the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, it, it really worked for me. Um, it, it was definitely from its era. Uh, it is a cult classic. <laughs> uh, it's not as well known, I don't think, as other ones because um, had we not experienced some of John Carpenter's other films, um, obviously mm -hmm. everybody's kind of everybody's at least seen one or two of them for sure. Because uh, mm -hmm. he's so so prolific uh, as a, as a director uh, and a writer and, and a, just a very talented individual, uh, this one it was it was fun. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it, it hits in a different way. Uh, you know, you, mm -hmm. you kind of have to be loose with it, um, but it, it's it's very much practical effects and just outlandish kind of absurd themes that that it rolls into. <laughs> and, I, I love that it's. It's John Carpenter and Dan O'Bannon, uh, who uh, Dan O'Bannon is notorious for a lot of uh, the classic horror sci-fi movies. Um, he he wrote uh, right on the cusp of this. He wrote Alien, <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. yeah, the the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, yeah, this was sort of like a comedy, and he's like, okay, if I can't make people laugh, I'm gonna scare them. <laughs> so, uh, he he wrote Alien in response to this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it it covers a lot. It it borrows, uh, or it is the first start of when you see certain kind of archetypes or. Uh, 
material kind of things that are loosely copied from one to another um, like where I got a second layer of appreciation for this to kind of see like where some original ideas came from for sci-fi in general like mm-hmm. the genre horror as well I mean it's all it's kind of funny how it rides that line uh, where mm-hmm. Alien uh, comes along later on of course in 1979 Ridley Scott's Alien uh, but yeah. it, 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 there's a lot of things that it calls back to that, that uh, I was like oh that's where that's from so it was, mm-hmm. it was, that was cool for me as a sci-fi just a general science fiction person if you've been exposed to any number of sci-fi you kind of pick yeah, up and on themes and reoccurring things but it's kind of cool to see like where it comes from especially in, in mm-hmm. the genre that it is in film in a movie uh, specifically if that makes sense yeah yeah and um i was reading about how uh this inspired red dwarf um that okay. that uh, british that tv sense. series <laughs> yeah uh the guy that that wrote red dwarf was inspired by this and uh, just the whole idea of uh, I like the idea of that um, it's space truckers. Uh, <laughs> it's sort of like the um, <laughs> yeah they, they they took the idea of a uh, uh, 2001 and kind of spun it on its head and was like yeah. okay you know if <laughs> if this is like a really like uh, you know everyday guy doing the job <laughs> this is what it would be like <laughs> yeah it it hits a lot of uh the thing i was trying to think of what what i can just pull apart here oh, oh oh that's what the other point i want to make so what i i don't think i explained my point very well so like when alien came along it, later on it perfectly blended sci- sci-fi with horror in a very unique way mm-hmm. uh that was one of many times to be poorly imitated <laughs> through endless derivatives yeah. derivative up to this day. Excuse me, I can talk. Uh, but this was John Carpenter's first debut, correct? Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, he perfectly blends comedy and sci-fi together, uh, just like as Aliens is with sci-fi and horror, so is this with sci-fi and comedy, uh, which... It's just kind of it's just interesting. Uh, another layer. I'm kind of nerd down a little bit, but yeah, <laughs> it's kind of what we do. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, it's um, there's there's a um, a uh, documentary on YouTube about the making of this movie oh. that I watched. Um, yeah, <laughs> that that, that uh, uh, kind of goes into. Uh, how how this movie was made and um, a lot of the the back history about it about um, you know it was a student film uh, to start with and um, there was a um, a, uh, a short film uh, let me see if I can uh... yeah and um, while you're looking that up. This has this. It has very referential, yeah, it was, self-referential um, things too that um, are interesting uh, that I noticed a little bit more on, for, especially from like when we covered the the last show. Uh, yeah, recall, the um, self-referential that, unto itself. Yeah, the the uh, uh, John Carpenter uh, did the. Um, short film resurrection of bronco billy oh. uh, before this and uh it was um it actually got an oscar nomination and won um <laughs> uh the uh, the oscar for for that movie uh back then uh student films could be nominated for oscars and it actually won and um when they were making this movie, um, Jar Carpenter was like, okay, uh, well, I, I want this to be our movie. Uh, so he kind of stole it from, uh, from, uh, so that, because back then, um, like when he won the Oscar for, uh, the resurrection of Bronco Billy, uh, it was the, uh, uh, the, um, the 
you know, the the university that actually won it because they own the rights to it. Oh, okay. Um, right. So that would just go to their credentials as a yeah, exactly. Da, 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 art department or film department yeah. or whatever. Okay, that makes sense. So so when he he was like, okay, well, I want to make uh, this the Stark Star as a movie. He ran with it and stole it from the university, and the university actually went ahead and let them steal it, um, so that it was sort of like a promotion for the university as well. Mm, um, yeah. So so yeah, he um, and um, you know the, him and uh, Dan and O'Bannon they worked uh, very closely together. Uh, to make the movie, uh, the first, I think the first 40 minutes of it, uh, which is mainly, uh, when they're like in the, um, uh, control deck, uh, mm -hmm. of the, the ship and stuff. And yeah. also at the end of the movie is, uh, basically the short film of it. And then, um, the guy who made the blob, actually hit them up and uh, kind of worked it with mm -hmm. them to make it a feature film. Right. And um, so a lot of <laughs> the extra stuff, like what you see there with the uh, the, the alien, <laughs> right. uh, were sort of like uh, expanded it out to like a, a feature link film. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you could kind of touch back on that self-referential thing uh he did like what hitchcock does uh in my notes uh, about it was um hitchcock would often like put himself in the in the films in some kind of way like a mm -hmm. picture frame or something and carpenter does this too um you can see him in a photograph hanging on a wall uh, just kind of like um but but that, that's back when the spaceship is like is violently shaking i believe if you recall like it's very brief i had to go back and, and like, look but um, it's just kind of cool uh, in general. Also, also, um, uh, uh, John Carpenter, uh, the guy that who's up in the upper deck, tailback, uh, he he had such a thick accent that they had to uh, dub that guy in, and so John Carpenter is the voice of that guy up in the upper deck. <laughs> Interesting. Oh. Yeah, and uh, Dan O'Bannon is pinned back in in the movie. Right on. Yeah. So the the guy that that's uh, that has the uh, the alien. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> A lot of alien movies. <laughs> that's funny. That is funny. I, yeah, and and it was kind of interesting because um um. The, the idea was that um, John Carpenter would direct this movie and then uh, they would do another movie that Dan O'Bannon would direct and then they would go back and forth. Okay. Um, so that was that was the plan. And uh, but after this movie, um, John Carpenter is like, oh, well. I don't really want to work with Dan O'Bannon anymore. <laughs> mm. And so, yeah, it was, it was kind of contentious uh, that they kind of separated after, after this movie. Oh, interesting, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah th there's a... I don't know that there's too many famous, famous people, but they're, they're obviously John Carpenter, but um, I'm not saying mm -hmm. these guys didn't do anything significant, I'm just saying um, I'm not as familiar with them as I, <laughs> I have come <laughs> across in, in other travels, but yeah, the, I was going to say, uh, there's like a Star Trek to mm -hmm. like a reference there. Um, oh, oh, and, oh, that's right. Uh, the yeah. Lieutenant Doolittle, when he died, I believe he's wearing red, <laughs> it's kind of like a throwback to like uh, Red Shirt's in the original series, like if you saw if they were wearing red and they were not a main character, bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they would die. Yeah, uh, and Dan O'Bannon um, famously had worked on uh, a version of Dune that Jodorowsky was going to do. Really? Um, so yeah, it, <laughs> it's kind of interesting how our channel always kind of ties back to Dune. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, Dan O'Bannon, uh, he did 
did work on a, a version of Dune that never was made uh, that was going to be a 10 hour version that uh, uh, Jordorowski did. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, it, uh, also, he's a St. Louis native. Uh, shout out to yeah. St. Louis. Yeah, I didn't, yeah. I'm just kind of seeing that. That's yeah, cool. I always always forget that he's passed away, um, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, he, he passed away a, a few years ago. Yeah, he did quite yeah quite quite, mm-hmm. quite a little bit ago. But yeah, that tribute to him. Oh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah, um, he, without yeah. him, there would be no Alien franchise as we know it anyway. Absolutely, absolutely not. Well, I mean, Jesus Christ, um, look at this. <laughs> Even yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The the whole idea of uh, that whole segment uh, where the alien was trying to kill him uh, was was the direct influence. That, that he actually developed into Alien. Because uh, he was like, okay, if I can't make them laugh, I will make them scared. Right. right. <laughs> and uh, that's that's what he uh, developed into Alien. That's funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, I mean, it was, it was kind of funny. I mean, don't get me wrong, it wasn't, like, hilarious, but... I got it. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's kind of like um, you rewatch Spaceballs. <laughs> like, right. Absolutely. <laughs> it's along the, along those lines, not not far <laughs> off. Uh, yeah, and that is Mel Brooks. That the the, the, the yeah. Land. <laughs> it's kind of kind of cool how they they uh, they did it. Like um, like the the whole setup where uh, the upper deck where uh, the the Talbot was at. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they, they didn't have a dome, so they, they painted, uh, a backplate, uh, that, that kind of looked like a dome. Uh, so, so, yeah, it, it uh, so, so, you know, it kind of looked like, a like a, like a dome up at the top, um, like when, um, the guy goes up. Uh, I forget the name of him. Uh, yeah, if you uh, find a yeah, I'm trying to find a yeah, I know you're sure of it. Oh, in any case, it's uh, <laughs> the the practical effects were. I mean, they, look, they're not like amazing, but they're, they're right. Yeah, cool. it, like they, it, works. It, it works with the film. You know, like it mm-hmm. works with it. Like it, it goes with the ridiculous <laughs> nature of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> friggin' beach ball. <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, but yeah, if you go back to the the uh, couple couple of pictures back, yeah, 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 like at at the top there, um, right. where there there's like the dome at the top. Um, it's not like a like a, a, a dome. There's like a back plate uh, that's painted like a dome. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> that's cool. and. Uh, yeah, it's um in yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> it is a space out Odyssey. <laughs> yeah, it was. I I saw this and I wanted to watch it. Uh, and uh, um, the the whole storyline is a little bit ridiculous, but it's um equally as outlandish as like space swords. Uh, or laser swords, you know, like Star Wars. Like when you start to break it down, like uh, as a as a genre. Yeah, it it, it sort of like um, it shows you what you can do with sci-fi. Uh, it doesn't have to be like this big mind expanding experience. It could be right. sort of like this little little experience <clears throat> where the you know, at the the end of the movie, it's like the guy having an intellectual debate with a missile. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Which, um, <coughs> excuse me, I believe that I, I knew there was a, a science fiction book reference, and I was kind of floating around on it, uh, and I couldn't make the connection uh, until just recently. Uh, it was like Ian M. Banks. Um, he has a lot of this kind of very very highbrow kind of back and forth with with the the ai in in his universes um in the culture mm-hmm. series is what i'm talking about referring to 
Um, there's also a few things that it kind of touches on, which I haven't really necessarily looked. Oh, that, that's the, to... the scene there. The, oh, the, yeah. The uh, back plate. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the, like you said, yeah, the and this, this movie are... is the first movie that has the uh, going into warp speed with the, the, the uh, uh, stars going like... Uh, you know, going Start going feeling. out like that. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, which became a screensaver for everybody else. Yeah, there's a good shot of mm-hmm. that uh, that dome that you were talking about. Uh, but yeah. I, I was gonna, I was saying, um, I, I I wouldn't be surprised if Ian and Banks was um, had seen this or was inspired by it or something. Mm-hmm. You know, along these lines, because it, it's it's pretty cool how these things can follow one after another. Um, and you also see how different John Carpenter is from where he started you know like where mm-hmm. he kind of he he was he kind of gave up the comedy side and and went into the where, where he did uh, which was yeah <laughs> yeah was satisfying in its own right <laughs> honestly yeah both him and dan o'bannon went into horror after this <laughs> which is kind of interesting and um there's a there's a scene in this yeah. where um the uh, Dan O'Bannon character, Pinback, uh, has to um, grip onto this uh, elevator, and um, I was kind of curious how they did it, but yeah, there's like a, they they did it to where there was a a board that he was actually laying on um, <laughs> that that he was able to um, suspend. To, yeah, kind of, kind of imitate the effect of him hanging on to <laughs> uh, the uh, you know up there on on the uh, the end of the elevator. Uh, but yeah, it's it's kind of cool that how they uh, engineered a lot of the special effects to to make it look like uh, what they were doing. Yeah, they, they did they did very good on so, well, I mean, look, it's. 70s low budget you know thing but it's right. not it's not it's not really not campy i guess um like where something like this would not have aged i mean obviously it's from the era it is from but it's not like bad you know what i mean like um yeah well i mean they, they no, were so hippies. bad it's good they, they were hippies <laughs> right. uh, one of uh <laughs> when i was watching the documentary uh they were talking about how dan o'bannon was sort of uh the in your face kind of uh hippie guy <laughs> and uh, they were talking about how uh one of the stories where he was at home and um he was uh his mom had um uh one of the ladies there that uh and she's like oh you're like the uh typical hippie guy and he's like, yeah, and you're like uh, the typical person <laughs> uh, of your generation. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. And uh, yeah, and she she got like really mad. <laughs> it was like, yeah, you can <laughs> you can you can see it a little bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or at least it, at least it colors the photos when you go back and look at them anyway. Uh, for yeah. Country, but <laughs> that's funny. Well, uh, I'm glad he is a hippie. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out uh, fairly well, especially for his storytelling and horror. And I, now I, I look at half these, and I want to why I want to watch half of them. <laughs> yeah, and, and it, um, it's kind of interesting how they uh, actually filmed a lot of the stuff. Like, uh, there's that scene where uh, I forget the name of the character. He was like uh, uh, going down to talk to the cryogenic chamber with the uh the 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 uh the head head of the the ship before he died um (laughs) but yeah it's supposed to be like really cold there and uh it was actually really hot and they they actually had like um uh like this kerosene mist that was going on <laughs> that made it look like it was cold and um so he was like uh before the the they were like filming he would like cover his mouth 
and like threw off the cover um, in between the, them shooting. <laughs> right on. That's awesome. That's and cool. also, like the helmet, <laughs> like them in space, exactly um, was a was a kid's helmet. Oh really? <laughs> Yeah, and uh, that's small. why it's so small, and uh, that's <laughs> that is fun. I wonder if that inspired some of the looks for Alien later on. Um, I don't, you just <laughs> never know. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, they, so they have to. Uh, the ridiculous uh, plot line. They have to uh, destroy unstable <laughs> planets. Uh, so it mm-hmm. kind of creates this, this situation, and um, there's a couple scenes like where they other self-referential things too for the alien in this uh, universe. It's on one of the uh, playing cards uh, when they're when they're in the uh, the lounge bit there. Sorry, I was working notes. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think you get what I'm saying. Um, that's funny. I I don't think we'll get it struck with uh, playing a little bit of this. Yeah, no. And, uh, <clears throat> I like, um, the cool thing is, like, uh, yeah. when they're in the, um, the main center there where they're, like, um, <clears throat> they're controlling the, the ship, uh, there's, like, like a, the um, yeah, the, the bridge, uh, they had, like, a board with the camera on it, and, uh, so, like, the camera was, like, drawn on the board through through them. Mm. Uh, so it's almost like um, uh, sort of like how, how they did Evil Dead with the with the camera. Uh, I like I like how they uh, they kind of uh, were were inventive with the, how they, they shot that. <laughs> right, right. That's cool. And um, like <laughs> And like uh, the uh, how how they had like um, they had like uh, ice trays <laughs> upside down uh, with the lights up above them. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. To to make it look like uh, like buttons and stuff. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, well, um, the, the Gene Roddenberry and the original Star Treks, you know, they would uh, play pranks on each other and like use kind of or reuse or imagine uh their instruments or whatever for mm-hmm. nerds uh this is very true of alien where they d- endlessly decipher it or or just pay homage to it uh it's ridiculous um including down to video games too uh there's a remake or, or uh, one in early 2000s i want to say anyway it didn't matter but uh it was like one of the rare times like where a video game um, was good <laughs> following a, <laughs> a, a movie or vice versa a movie following a video game uh, which is it's not that's not always a given um, but yeah I, I this oh, was um, um, I, I'm not t- I'm quite sure I'm doing it too much justice but I mean it, 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 it's a fun it's a fun it's not campy like I said it feels good it, mm-hmm. it moves along it's oh and uh, a, a little bit of trivia you know the uh, they have a monster in it, which is a beach ball, <laughs> right? And uh, there's like a, some feet to it. Guess who plays uh, the monster in it? Who? Uh, it's the guy that eventually played Michael Myers in Halloween. Really? It's that guy. <laughs> oh, he's yeah. also uh, speaking of him being a hippie. He's a, he was also a deadhead too. I wanted to m- mention that as well. Um, he nice, liked, uh, the Grateful Dead, uh, like which is not a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> kind of explains his uh, creative creativity, maybe. <laughs> yeah, and and it's kind of interesting that um, <laughs> you know the uh, John Carpenter was like, okay, uh, we're gonna do this movie. And it's like they did it in sort of like segments. It's like a, they recorded the the first forty minutes um, at one point, and then about a year later, they added like a, a few few minutes later. And then once they actually had the money to make a movie, uh, they added 
onto that. <laughs> That's awesome. That's cool. Yeah, what was the budget for that anyway? Uh, I was curious to see that. I think the um, when they actually had the money for the movie, it was sixty thousand. Oh, okay. Well, I don't think it's gonna tell me. Gonna be a pro yeah, whatever. Thanks, IMDb. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. <so> stupid. <laughs> I'm too lazy to do, do a Google search. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Adam Breckenbaugh. That was the bomb. Uncredited. Oh, that's funny. I'll be. About 19, that's funny. Yeah, because mm -hmm. um, the, the missiles in Ian and Banks' uh, culture series are also smart. Um, and uh, there's another author, or uh, one that I, I read recently that does that too. Um, God, it was a yeah, big, I long think series. It um, but anyway, it's, it's not an uncommon thing that's been copied before. Yeah, what I, what I read is, like I think the ending of the movie is based off of a short story by Ray Bar Bradbury's uh, Kaleidoscope. Um, I haven't okay. read that short story. <laughs> I have heard uh, that story come up before in general in sci-fi sci mm -hmm. book circles. Like that's Ray Bradbury, I have yet to go into <laughs> too much and explore his works. Uh, one day, I'm sure. Uh, but Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, so uh, any any of you out there that are familiar with the story, you can uh, let us know about that. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, low budget, um, but it works very well. Uh, like I said, it doesn't get campy or, or crappy uh, like other things that don't <laughs> quite hold up <laughs> over, over time. But this, yeah, it's one of those one of those. Uh, it's like an artifact. Movies, yeah, it, it kind of inspires things. Right. Uh, like um, I, I love Red Dwarf. Um, I, uh, that's that's one of my my go to shows. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I've seen I, I think all of that series. Uh, but yeah, you definitely see the inspiration there. And, um, yeah, it's sort of like the, uh, when they were making this, I could see where it was the anti, uh, 2001. It's like, um, you know, you're, you're down yep. dirty, um, you're <laughs> hard, truckers, very... truck, yeah, truckers in space. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, take on, on this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, and you get that spirit in Alien too. Yeah, you, know, you can just see like where a lot of themes were kind of borrowed from liberally, or, or like you can see like where one idea skates over to another very easily with this. So, it's funny and ironic that it's a would have been a student project more than likely, um, mm -hmm. but you know um, John Carpenter wisely uh, hit it our way. Oh, you know whatever he did to set it up <laughs> to uh, to go in his favor because it really. I don't. <clears throat> it would be very interesting to see an alternative uh, take of if this had stayed, a, a, you know, under the university, like where nobody would, nobody would have, we wouldn't have ever seen it. It would have been something mm -hmm. obscure, like maybe shared around in the right circles. Uh, but no, it actually yeah made it to <laughs> yeah the day, so that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's um, yeah the 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 guy that took over Jack Harris who uh, did. Uh, uh, famously, the Blob. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, John Carpenter is like, oh yeah, I have a, a a movie version of this movie, and so so he showed uh, Jack Harris the movie, and there was like a uh, five minute uh, segment where like uh, the guys were sleeping in uh, their sleeping quarters. And like it was going through the uh, process of them waking up, uh, them showering, um, everything that they do to wake up, and then when it hits to uh, eating breakfast, they wake up and go go eat. <laughs> That's funny. And That's funny. and so that 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 whole segment sounds funny. Uh, but he was like, "Okay, you're you're waiting there for like a total five minutes, waiting for them to get to <laughs> breakfast. That does not work. <laughs> so that that was that was cut out from the the actual the actual movie. But the, final, final <laughs> the whole idea of it 
is actually funny. Right. Uh, but but yeah, the the yeah, it, it doesn't play. Um, that doesn't play well with the uh, with the time that <laughs> that that it has. <laughs> right, right, right. Makes sense. Yeah, uh, it's just fun. Uh, again, John Carpenter's origin um, uh, de- debut uh, widely. Anyway, um, mm-hmm. I, it would be fun to go back and, and watch this one, this resurrection of uh, uh, Bronco Billy. It might be a little yeah. bit outside yeah, our reach. Kinda... For a couple yeah, I was kind of curious about that one. Yeah, yeah, we, we might have to do like a pickup on one on this one because uh, it is western adjacent. So I mean, it's not mm-hmm. far stretch. We did cover uh, good, the bad, the ugly, and this is a noteworthy. I'm sure this has its nerds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and uh, maybe in Halloween we could do Halloween. <laughs> Indeed, yeah, that's a good point. Good point. Cool, cool. Well, you have any other thoughts on uh, this? Uh, um, I wouldn't call it a masterpiece, but definitely a, <laughs> a, a work from a very creative work from John Carpenter and Dan uh, Dan O'Bannon. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it made me uh, appreciate Dan O'Bannon in a way that I didn't realize that mm-hmm. I would appreciate him uh, cool. because he, he's like a, a you know he's a character in the movie and. Right. Uh, I really enjoyed his performance in this. Yeah, he yeah. was actually a really good actor. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was pleasant. It was fun to watch. Uh, I'll, I'll mm-hmm. with that, like it didn't stretch or go, go f- too far. I mean, it, obviously, it's a student kind of thing, but they, yeah. they, did, they did a really good job. Mm-hmm. Considering where they went, it's not, not no surprise, uh, no surprise. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> Uh, any any other thoughts, my friend? No, I think that covers it. Yeah. Uh, and, and we've been uh, Mike and the first last nerdum. Uh, if you made it uh, this far, like Thomas likes to say, uh, we would appreciate <laughs> it if you could subscribe, uh, give us a comment, uh, throw us what you think. What's your favorite John Carpenter uh, movie or film um, that you that you like, or even um, something that he's been a part of, or Dan O'Bannon for that matter? Um, mm-hmm. And uh, also shout out to our latest episode. Um, you can see us there, and also more importantly, our ever-growing back catalog, uh, which is uh, ever-growing, uh, and it is always fun to uh, to go back and see what rises up the ranks as, as we go on forward mm-hmm. in time. Um, a lot of these are fun, uh, but uh, in any case, um, I just wanted to say that, uh, and I've been Mike. And I'm Thomas. 